In this step I'm going to show you how to configure your database to support uh, the content server and Oracle UCM 11G. There are two major steps that you need to perform uh, for configuring your database. You need to uh, configure your, uh, your database of choice to accept TCP IP connections and be up and running for you and you need to create a database schema for, uh, schemas actually for uh, the products with an Oracle UCM. Uh, let me go through the steps and show you uh, what involved in this. In front of you I have my virtual machine right now uh, that's running SQL Server 2008. Remember Oracle ECM 11G supports uh, three types of databases. It supports Obviously, Oracle database it supports SQL Server 2005 and 2008, and it supports uh, the DB2. I've chosen Oracle's. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm turning the SQL Server 2008 because out of the three supported databases, SQL Server has the smallest memory footprint. And uh, right now, if you look at uh, the memory used on my machine, I'm running my SQL Server and the Windows Server 192 megabytes of RAM. If you would uh, try to install Oracle Database 11G, you would probably be running about 2 gigs of RAM right now. It's a high performance database, but uh, for our purposes it may not be the best choice. Now let, let's go ahead and create our database first. Uh, start SQL Server Management Studio and we'll connect to the database engine under the databases. I'll we'll just say right click and say new database. Let's call it ECM and save it. We good. Uh, we don't need to do anything at this time. Now let's make sure that we have TCP IP connectivity to the SQL Server. Out of the box, it comes with uh, the shared memory uh, connection. And That would be the only protocol allowed. First of all, we want to make sure that the SQL Server browser is running and it's set to start up automatically. It, it's required for uh, TCP IP applications such as uh, Java based applications to connect to the SQL Server. The SQL Server itself needs to be automatic as well. And now we're going to click on network configuration, expand the protocols. Uh, click on the TCP IP and we, we want to make sure that it's enabled. If it's disabled, I'll just click, uh, right click and say enable. We all go to uh, allow connections to SQL Server now. If you indeed changed any of the configuration settings, you want to click on the services, right click on the SQL Server and click restart. Now let me show you how to create the database schema uh, for a content server and other Oracle ECM products. This is a new step uh, introduced in uh, Oracle ECM 11G. Uh, it actually uses the tool called Repository Creating uh, Utility, which is a common utility for all of the Oracle products. Uh, let me show you how to uh, use that utility. I have uh, a copy of the RCU installed on a CD. We go to the bin directory and uh, run the file called rcu.bat on the Windows environment. And it starts the uh, repository creating utility. We can, uh, we're going to create a new repository and we're going to we go into SQL Server. The server name is uh, the actual machine name backslash instance name. In our case, we use a SQL Express, so that would be VPC server slash SQL Express. Port is 1433. Database name is uh, ECM, is the database that we just created. Uh, we need to use the SA, uh, the, the DBA or SysDBA user who will be creating the actual database user for us. I'm going to click next and we'll check the prerequisites for us. Everything is okay. Now what we need is 
and we expand enterprise content management and we're gonna pick the content server 11g and the installation guide also recommends you to uh, create the schema for metadata services you click next and what we see is we have an error happening here and uh, now what we need to look for the details in uh, it also tells us what the log file is it's a big change from uh, 10 gr3 where you had to know where the log file is uh, rcu actually tells you so let's let's look in the log file and uh, see what went wrong again document and settings administrator local settings temp and there is a file name there we have to cancel close the rcu if we keep it open, it will keep the connection open to the SQL Server and will not let us run the scripts. See Document and Settings Administrator Local Settings Temp And we look in the rcu.log file. Scroll down and it tells us what went wrong. And it also tells us, uh, it gives us the SQL command that we need to run to correct it. So let's start the SQL Server uh, Management Studio. We'll connect to the database engine and we'll just say new query. Now we're gonna copy uh, that SQL statement and paste it into query window and run it. We have a success here. Now we're gonna do uh, the same thing for the other command. We'll paste that command too. We need to notice that in, in in the SQL statement here, there is a, a variable here for database name, so we'll replace it with the ECM. We'll execute the query, and the query completed successfully. Now we can close the Management Studio. Uh, we don't need to save anything, and uh, we can start the RCU.bat again. Go to the bin directory. Start RCU bat. I'll start over. Create. VPC server. SQL. Express. Port is 14.33. Database name is ECM. Username and SA. And there is a password for it. Prerequisites are fine. Content server and a database uh, and the metadata schemas services. Now everything is uh, perfect. Let's create. Uh, let's set the password. We'll set it to something easy to remember. That would be uh, your database connection password. For production, obviously, you'll need to do something better than the three characters I've used now and we're creating the schemas now everything is success we've done creating database schemas now our database is ready to be connected to from the content server we can proceed with the installation in this section I'll show you how to install WebLogic server uh, let me show you how to do it I have a DVD drive with uh, WebLogic installation here, so you just start it and, and run it. Your WebLogic installation screen is now up. Click Next. 
create new middleware home and we leave the default directory name I'm uh, currently choosing not to receive any security updates through my Oracle support but for production settings you should definitely leave that on and put your email and password for your Oracle support click next and I'm okay with this typical configuration uh, the screen gives you another chance of changing the installation directories click next it's just asking you where to put the menus all users is fine verify your configuration click next and uh, the installation begins okay and the installation now complete nothing else was need to be needed to be done we don't have to run the quick start, just click done and we're ready to proceed to the next step. This video has been brought to you by ECM Solutions. ECM Solutions offer tailored, street tough, uh, but at the same time very affordable Oracle ECM education. We allow you to mix and match your topics to your task and the project at hand, so you only pay for the information that you really need and not uh, paying for any fluff and filler material. Uh, you will we can also feed training to your schedule and uh, we can deliver it in chunks to minimize your uh, impact on your projects we have instructors who are hands-on and working on the real projects at the real time I'm actually uh, also delivering the training myself uh, for uh, some of the clients for our best accounts and we also offer you massive savings when compared to traditional training when you pay per person per day we only charge you for instructor's time so savings can be really significant you can contact us at contact at thank you for watching